All right, so we're back at this. I'm doing another Star Wars API talk about React Query because my last video, I realized that I didn't even read the documentation. I went ahead and changed my title because like someone called me out and said like, you didn't even read the docs. And I went to the docs and they actually tell you exactly how you can do this by using something called use queries, plural, right? So if you use this method, this allows you to basically fetch a bunch of different queries at once and those will all be cached individually, right? Um, and I didn't know that, so I apologize for the last video where I was kind of complaining about React Query. But let me show you how that kind of works and also show you like what we are building in this video. Um, so in my index.js, I have a query client with a cache time and stale time set to like, what was that 60 minutes or 10 hours or something? I guess that's 10 minutes. But if you go to the actual app, let me show you real quick how I had this working with the use queries. So um, make sure this works. And so let me kind of walk you through the code. Basically, when this component first loads, we're using a use query to fetch all the people. So this app, if you're not familiar with the other videos I've done on this app, it does request to a people's API. And the results have a bunch of different people that have URLs to their sub resources. I think this is using a hate OS um, format for their REST API. But if you want to know the home world of Luke Skywalker, you have to go and get this URL and then further fetch that data. Um, and by using React Query by default, you can kind of use this use queries method to do all the individual queries for the home worlds based on the URLs and have all those queries be kind of cached so that if any other page in the pagination were to try to do the same home world or have like, you know, two people from the same home world, it wouldn't do the request anymore. It would just fetch it directly from cache. So we get the people and then we get all the home worlds that are kind of existing in the people's data. So this should be an array of like 10 URLs. We use those URLs, we map over them. And for every URL, we set up a query key we set up a query function and we say the stale time is infinity, right? So stale time is basically don't allow the browser to like go and refetch the data um, because you already have the cache and you know it's not stale. If you don't set this, if you set this to zero, it's still gonna keep on hitting the API, but it's gonna load the data from cache first and then it's gonna go hit the API and maybe get a refresh data. But we know that the Star Wars API is never gonna change its data, so we can just keep this as infinity. And as you see, like down here, we kind of, for all the people, we go and we look up the homeworld URL to get the name. This is just a function that loops over all the homeworld query res results that came here. So we do homeworld's data, which is an array of different use query like result sets. And we find the piece of data that has the exact same homeworld URL that we're looking for. We return that data and then we get the name. So it's a little bit convoluted way of like getting the home worlds. And this is why you'll see it when I refresh the page, it'll first load Luke Skywalker. I wear the throttle this just a little bit. It'll load like all the people and then later you'll see the home worlds pop up. So let's just go ahead and refresh this page. And you should see that kind of happen where the home worlds slowly come in. And as I go to new pages, you'll notice that it fetches some new home worlds. Now, if I were to go back, because we are using the use queries and we're also caching it like indefinitely with the, the stale time of infinity, notice that it never makes any more requests to like the home worlds, right? So that's how you can kind of achieve what I was talking about in my other videos by using this use queries hook. And if I go to the comments, there was another thread that I kind of want to talk about as well. I want to say that you can actually utilize custom components and all those components can kind of have the use query calls inside them. So let's try to do that approach. Um, so if I go back to the code, I do kind of have that set up already. Instead of doing find home worlds, I'm basically setting up a component called home world that takes in a URL, right? And so what this component is gonna do, if I go up to the top, this has its own use query call that is going to basically fetch the home world um, from the endpoint using a, a fetch request. And that behind the scenes is going to cache it, right? So every home world component is going to cache their own results. And this is kind of the workaround that you can also do if you have like 
a API resource that has a bunch of nested children resources. You could just make components and have those components be responsible for fetching the data. This is the, I guess the one downside of this approach is this, if you want to make really dumb, dumb components, like just render only components, you have all this logic inside of your home world component. So it seems like kind of a hack to have to add this component just to do this approach, but let's go ahead and save it and go to the UI and like kind of verify this still works the exact same way as the other approach. And let me turn this back off to no throttling. So in the first request, we do like five requests, go forward a page, we do a bunch of requests. We go back and notice that the home worlds are not fetched anymore because they're all cached. And the reason they're cached is because we're calling a individual use query call inside of all the home world components. So I wanted to share that, um, you know, these people are kind of talking about it. And then Wicked Head kind of left a URL explaining like the code base which I'm definitely grateful for him showing me this code because it just helped me like understand what people are saying about like using a custom component. And again, he has like a planet component, which is using react query to do that caching and fetching for us. So pretty cool. So thank you to wicked head and all my other people who are kind of, you know, letting me know that there are actually ways to do this in react query. So I definitely appreciate that. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys learned something new. I definitely learned something new in these past two days about React Query, and I need to go through and read out the docs. Um, someone called me out and you know said like if you actually read the docs, you'd notice that there is a use queries. So I'm assuming there's a lot of other things that I need to learn about React Query before I start making more videos where I kind of complain about it. So I apologize for the last video, but hopefully this video kind of clears up some things that I was not really clear about on the last video. Um, yeah, be sure to join my Discord if you want to talk to me directly or ask me questions or just kind of get help if you're trying to learn how to code. And also be sure to subscribe, like, leave a comment. Have a good day and happy coding.